Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Anu. How are you doing today? All right. Well, you know, um, I'm the one who interrupted you from your interesting project, and I'm also the one standing between you and lunch. So I better be interesting, or you guys are going to get mad at me, right? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'll try to be. So the, the, um, the advice that I have for you guys, and I'll explain it later on, is about, is about how it's okay to be different, okay? Now, um, I'll share a little bit about my background, uh, where I came from, what I do. I'm mostly going to talk about this interesting new consumer product called uh, chatbots, which you're, all of you have played with and encountered, but I tell, I'll tell you what goes on behind the scenes there, okay? So where I'm from. Now, there's a lot of us in the Bay Area uh, that are from India and from you know, other parts of the world. So we're used to a very diverse crowd. But when I came over 20 years ago, whenever you said to anyone that I'm from India, they always said, oh, there are tigers there. And, um, and also, they talked about the Taj Mahal. But did you know that the Taj Mahal was built without any computers? And it is the most modern marvel um, of preciseness and geometry and beauty and architecture. It took 20,000 people over 20 years to build it. And it is actually a tomb. It was an emperor's, it was built for an emperor, Shah Jahan's wife, who's, who died giving birth to their 14th child. Now, I'm sure you have brothers and sisters, but does anybody here have 14 brothers and sisters? Okay, so imagine what your mom goes through when she has to have 14 kids. Um, and then you have uh, tigers. Well, they're beautiful animals, and they're originally, the Bengal tiger is from India, but uh, there's very few of them left. And, and uh, there's, you know, there used to be hundreds of thousands, millions of tigers, and now there are over just about 2,000 left, and they're working to bring them back. So that's an interesting piece from where I came from. But you know, other than the Taj Mahal and Tigers, we also have major cities in India. And these are some of the cities I grew up in. That's the gateway of India in Mumbai, Bombay, used to be known as Bombay, and, the, and this is in New Delhi. So I grew up in cities, but I went to school here. It was in the mountains, beautiful little uh, location, and everybody had to wear uniforms in our school. Aren't you lucky you don't have to wear uniforms? There was a lot of emphasis on being exactly the same as everyone else. And what am I here to talk to you about? How to be different, okay? But um, like for example, that girl in that uniform, she's in a lot of trouble because one of her socks is lower than the other. So there was, a, it, there was a lot of emphasis on being precise. Now, having discipline is a good thing. You know, getting up in the morning, going to school, doing your assignments. I'm not knocking that at all, but um, here are some people that are different, okay? Does anybody know who these people are? Okay, you go ahead, tell me. Steve Jobs on the left, Albert Einstein in the center, and Elon Musk on the right. Yes, and they're all pretty different people, aren't they? They thought differently. Because Steve Jobs thought differently, he's given you that lovely uh, iPhone that everybody loves, uh, and Albert Einstein basically laid the solved a lot of mysteries of science and laid that out in front of us. And Elon Musk came from uh, software and payments and now is sending rockets to Mars and building electric cars. And what's different is that they all thought differently. They were creative, they thought differently, and thereby they achieved great things. And I'm here to tell you that it's okay to be different. Now, one of my topics here today is what my company currently does, which is um, making chatbots. Does anybody use chat? Do you use messaging? Yeah. Do you use Snapchat? Do you use Messenger? Do you use Skype? Okay, so everybody knows that um, in, in the past, you know, it used to be, uh, people used to send emails, and now they just basically message and chat with each other. And so the bots are already here. And let me show you some of the bots that you are surrounded by that you probably didn't pay too much attention to. But before I do that, I'm going to show you um, 
uh, a useful chatbot, okay? So Snapchat and messaging, all this is fun communication. But how do enterprises use this to provide some value? And how do entrepreneurs like me turn this into a business? So has anybody had an accident or got hurt sometime and you needed to go to urgent care, yeah? So there was no time, either go to emergency or you know just an urgent care because you have a bad cold and it's a Sunday and there's your doctor is not around, right? And you go there and you end up waiting a long time and it's kind of annoying and half the day is gone, right? So um, here's a service that this healthcare, Banner Medical Group, which is huge, decided to provide. Actually, I can show you a video about it, okay? So it's the ba Banner Urgent Care Health Bot. It, it'll find a location near you. So just through messaging, Facebook maybe, it's going to ask you some questions. Okay, where, you know, set, give me your zip code and tell me where you are and I'm going to look for a location for you that is the nearest. Okay, I found one right near you. Do you want directions? Do you want to know hours of operation? Most important, you want to know how long do I have to wait? So it's going to tell you, okay, I'm going to search at this location. How long is, you know, I'm going to let you reserve time. I'm going to tell you your wait time is zero to 15 minutes. And I'm going to even let you register online and drive up there, okay? So that's useful, right? That's useful. Not that Snapchatting isn't useful. It, it gives you a lot of fun. But now it's giving you directions. And there was no human being involved at the end of this. Nobody had to wait on a Sunday and work 24 hours shift or anything. This was a bot that gave you all this information. It tapped into the systems that tell you wait times. It, it uh, tapped into an API to find you directions based on your zip code and how close you are, okay? So that's one of the bots that my company is building. But what is a chatbot? So it's a service. It's a very precise service that's delivered via chat. And it works on all the different chat platforms. Now there is a giant app. All of you may be familiar with the chat apps that we have here, but there's a giant app in China called WeChat. Anybody use WeChat? Yeah, there we go, yes. And this is an example of how a mega chat app can be. Because with WeChat today, you can renew your passport, passport send money, talk to a business, consult a doctor, watch TV, send and receive money. So this is an example of how a ubiquitous chat mega app can really provide value and convenience to users. What are the different types of chatbots out there? So first of all, there's a rules-based chatbot. This is only as smart as it's programmed to be. It can only answer specific things that it was designed to do, and it can't really go much further than that. And there's a good use for these scripted kind of bots. And then you have the AI chatbot. This one actually has intelligence, and it gets smarter as you go along, so that you don't have to be ridiculously specific. You can just ask general questions, and it gets smarter by talking to lots of people. So this is where we are going, where you have an intelligent bot that's answering questions that in natural language. And you see a lot of these around you, okay? So for example, you're looking for travel, and it's telling you, here are flight options, here are hotel options, here's the best place to stay, here's some information about the hotel. And it's providing it to you all on your phone without downloading an app. So you don't have to download an app, and you're accessing actually multiple sources of knowledge. And instead of browsing and pointing and clicking, you're asking a question, and it's giving you an answer. And then it's giving you medical advice. What's wrong with you? Does it look like this? OK. Here is some people who had this issue before, and here's what the doctor said about it. So you can consult on your symptoms, and, and certain doctors, et cetera, can weigh in. And then you have um, weather. 
What's the weather like? What's the weather like going to be tomorrow morning? Um, you know, what's the best way to do my hair for this weather? And things like that. So you can see that it can get into your daily life. There are even chatbots that actually are just there to be your friend. They're sympathetic. You tell them you're having problems and they consult and they tell you, here's what you need to do. Here's how you can feel better. They can just make you, if you're lonely, they can be friendly and make you feel good. And of course, everybody, many of you may have come across this, has seen Alexa. They control your home. You can switch on lights, ask it to perform certain functions for you, put on a TV show for you, and basically control the devices. And it's also being done through artificial intelligence. And so, as the CEO of Microsoft said, human language is the new interface. So, um, you know, recently I saw, I went into a, um, a movie theater and I went to the restroom and I wanted to wash my hands. I just put my hands under the tap and I just kept waiting and the water wouldn't come. And then I realized I actually have to lift it up. It's not automatic. I'm already used to sensors that just bring me water, as much water as I need it. And that's exactly what chatbots are going to be. They're going to be all over, and they're going to do all sorts of things for you, and you won't, you won't understand how you actually lived without them. And it requires actually a lot of technology behind it, you, you know, um, in terms of understanding English, understanding intent, understanding positive feelings, negative feelings, and also connecting it to all of the big systems, software, enterprise systems in your company so that you never have to call that 800 number and wait for someone to answer a simple question. You can just do it on chat and be on your way. So loads of efficiency coming from this the smart application of this technology to enterprise users and personal users, home users. And it's also going to create lots of opportunities for entrepreneurs like myself to um, you know, innovate and create new things, or new functions. So basically, I get back to, you know, it's time for you to be different. You can make your path. And I tied back to the fact that had I listened to what I was told to do, wear my socks exactly the way they're supposed to, wear a uniform, be like everyone else. You know, I may never have in, you know, learned these great new technologies and created the types of companies that I have. And so discipline is very good. Being um, practical and being on schedule is very good. And I'm certainly not encouraging you to not do that. But I also think that if you think differently, you can create great value for the world and great interest and innovation in your own lives. And I really highly encourage that. And then chatbots are my new mechanism for providing some interesting value to the world. So with that, thank you very much. <laughs> see, see, I told you I wouldn't keep you too long from lunch, right? Thank you, Anu. So right now we're going to open it up to questions. So if any of you have questions, please raise your hand and Anu can hopefully answer them. Yeah. Um, can chatbots recognize that they are not a human? Or do you have to program that in as well? OK. So chatbots um, definitely um, what we try to do, um, in, at least in my company, and I see that this is a trend in the industry, people are not all that comfortable talking to other people as much as they are in talking to a chatbot. Oh, I'm talking to an automated messaging bot. And so we make it very clear this is a bot. We've, in fact, we give our bot names. Hi, I'm V, the healthcare bot. Hi, I'm Max, the Intel bot. So people know right up front that it's a bot that they are talking to, and the bot is very comfortable carrying on a conversation, and people are more comfortable sharing more when they know they're talking to a computer system uh, automated service versus an actual human. They're not worried about what the bot will think about them. Yes? 
Can they what? Okay, well, you have to put in all the different security systems, right? Uh, as we know, anything can be hacked into, right? So um, even the bots have to be programmed in such a way that they are secure. Yeah, go ahead. How did I get the idea to start BotCo? Well, I mean, that's a kind of a little bit of a longish background to that. Um, about 15 years ago, I did a company called Rubric, which was uh, helping big enterprises do marketing. And at that time, we used a lot of email, right? And then I turned it on 15 years later, and that's what big enterprises are still using. They're sending you loads of email to get your attention and to give you the information that you want. And at the same time, I went to a large company site on Facebook, and I sent them a message through Messenger. And I said something like, hey, I want to buy $10 million worth of your stuff. Call me back. Nobody ever did. I did that three times. So I felt like there's something missing. People are doing social, but enterprises aren't doing it well. And they're sending you a lot of email, but like, who reads email anymore? People are on messaging. Anybody who wants to get my attention sends me a message on my phone. So I put the two um, together, and I said, maybe we need a platform, a service that allows companies to message uh, intelligently with their clients. And, and maybe they want to do this for their consumers to provide more value. So I thought it was a great opportunity, and that's how I got the idea. I told you it was a longish answer. Yes? Um, when you talk to a bot, it, like, but when you answer, it's like, does it matter about the space or it doesn't really matter about the space? Okay, so, so it, the, when you talk to a bot, it depends on how smart the bot is, right? So we train our bots to understand um, when you say cool, it doesn't mean cold, okay? Cool means something else. And that when you're being sarcastic, it knows you're being sarcastic. Yeah, great. Is yeah, great? Is that like really yeah, great? Or is it yeah, great? So that's depending on how you train your bots, right? And how is the underlying technology that powers them, right? Yes. Yes. Well, the person who provides the bot, uh, so in, you know, we work with big companies and they provide bots like hotels and hospitals and other you know, technology companies. They create these bots for their own uses. And they have a dashboard where they can watch every conversation. Right? Now, if you're having millions of conversations, it's really hard to find out what happened in a million conversations because you could have a billion messages. So it's not possible for a human being to read a billion messages. So what we do is we provide analytics that tells them, you know, here's how many conversations you've got going on, here's the ones that are successful, here are the ones that are stalled. So we give them tools to help them manage these million conversations, simultaneous conversations. Yes. Well, the core NLP engine that we use supports 192 languages. So what, we can build it really in any language and it understands all the languages because of uh, the, the translation of the core engine that we use. Yes? Yes. Yeah, those are chatbots too. They're just voice activated chatbots for a specific purpose, which is to control your home devices. Yes, that's a very good example of chatbots. Siri is a chatbot. You didn't think it was really somebody sitting there talking to you, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. A chatbot can talk to another chatbot. And depending on the purpose, right? So for example, I could have a chatbot. I could create a chatbot for myself that's all about updating 
my driver's license for all my different accounts. And those accounts could have chatbots that are there just to update your information. So my bot could talk to their bot and say, I want you to change, and their bot could say, okay, I changed it. So yes, in fact, yeah, chatbots could talk to each other. What is the first thing that's programmed into a chatbot? Yeah. The chat script. So exactly what kind of questions you might have and what answers, where is the source of all the answers. So what we do is we take information about, let's say, the services that are available at a particular hospital or a beauty salon or wherever, and we take unstructured data and feed it into our engine uh, and that engine actually organizes into a knowledge base. And then what you program as, um, as a developer is all the questions that might come, and then it, it'll find the answer by itself. And then you will test and debug that, and then you will launch a chatbot. The security system is already inbuilt, inbuilt into the whole platform. The security system already comes with the platform, and so it's already, you know, whatever you're doing is secure anyway, and then when you go through the testing, you make sure there are no vulnerabilities. Okay. Yes? So the chat bot is like a robot, right? So it's a software robot. Uh, no, no, You're, you have a natural, there are different kind of bots for different kinds of purposes. This bot, the purpose for this chat bot is to have a conversation. So what you want them to do is learn about what they're going to have a conversation about so they can have access to the information they're supposed to chat about. So you have to train the bot on the, what we call the corpus of data that they'll be dealing with. So we use uh, machine learning and we use the natural language processing heavily. Where do we get the data? From the companies that want to use the chatbot. Uh, we create them. The first data set that we, so we actually use, for example, if somebody's trying to provide a customer service bot, they already have a call center where they've been handling these questions. So there's, and they have, uh, if it's a marketing application, they have FAQs, frequently asked questions, that they have compiled. So the first thing we do is we feed the knowledge base with the existing questions. We call that to create the corpus. And then when the chatbot goes into action, it's now uh, factoring in all the new questions that are coming in. Yes? Well, we train the chatbots in slang as well, right? Like I mentioned an example, cool doesn't mean cold, right? And sometimes cool may actually mean cold. So it's called, you know, we have intent classifiers and we have uh, people that understand emotions, I mean chatbots that understand emotions and they factor it into it. Now we have two options, it's still a chatbot, right? And how sophisticated is the chatbot going to be for sort of simple routine queries, right? Probably not a lot of training at that point. So we have two options. One is transfer to agent, so automatically it will transfer to a live agent or give you an option to call. And if the customer doesn't want to provide that option, it can say, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Right? Yes. Uh, 
Did we make those chatbots? No, those companies made those, their own chatbots, yeah. All right, well, thank you again so much, Anu. It was a wonderful presentation. One more big round of applause. Thank you all. Thank you.